With the reconception, redesign, and reopening of the entire suite of galleries devoted to the art of the Islamic world, came the opportunity to conceive educational programs that would support the aims of the installation and further the museum's mission to foster appreciation and understanding. The galleries of the art of the Arab lands, Turkey, Iran, Central Asia, and later South Asia, seek to exemplify the diversity of artistic expression and influences in the regions represented by our collection, rather than reinforce a monolithic uh, view of Islamic art. The official titling of the galleries highlights those areas of the world represented by our collection and gives visitors a geographical framework in which to discover the rich artistic and political interplay between the various cultures that have a history there. I say various because one of the things we most want to convey in our programs is the diversity of cultures and the fact that, although predominantly Muslim for many centuries, these regions are home to many different traditions, beliefs, and personal narratives. Now, tonight's event, Powerless Before Love, exemplifies the education mission of the museum by bringing together two special groups of people that represent two rich poetic traditions within the Islamic world. The first are Ted and Andre Gorton, who are now based in London. There, they write, publish, and present extensively on Arabic literature and poetry. The second is Iraj Anvar, who teaches Persian language and culture at Brown University. He too has widely published um, and performs across the United States. Together, they will present to us a selection of readings from Arab and Persian love poetry, as well as discussions of the background and the histories of these rich traditions. We are also fortunate to have Sinan Gundogu and Afshin Gudarzi joining us tonight to provide musical accompaniment. Finally, special thanks must go to the Doris Duke Foundation for Islamic Art. They are generously supporting this event as well as many others over the course of this first season as we celebrate together the reopening of our new galleries. So please sit back and revel in the beauty, longing, and passion of the spoken word as we lead up to Valentine's Day next week. Thank you. Imagine, night in the desert. The all-encompassing darkness is relieved by the canopy of bright stars above, on the ground by a campfire. Men, women, and children crouch at the edge of the fire's circle of light, their attention riveted on a man in Bedouin robes standing near the fire as he recites a long ode in Arabic. The date is around 500 AD. The poets and his audience are all illiterate, for Arabic is not yet a written language. The message of Islam is still unrevealed. Sometimes he, or perhaps she, as a few of the very famous early poets were women, would simply recite old poems, most of them very familiar to the audience, who might join their voices to favorite passages. Sometimes he would improvise a new one, fitting phrases together like beads on a necklace, where each one had the required metrical feet to produce a line that fit the requirements of the various meters. This is probably how the Homeric epics, the Iliad and Odyssey, were composed originally. The poems they recited, or perhaps sung or chanted, began to have a standard thematic structure from very early on and the most prominent theme, usually the first, was love. 
We should not expect romantic gushing. What we find is emblematic of the austere way of life of the poets and their society. Here's one of the most famous, one of the seven odes that were so revered that according to tradition, they were hung around the Holy Kaaba in Mecca. The poet's name is Imrul Qais, and he lived sometime in the sixth century AD. As elsewhere, I'll read the first lines in Arabic to give an idea of the rhythm of this most musical poetry. قف نبكي من ذكرى حبيب ومنزلي بسقط اللوى بين الدخول فحملي فتود حفل مقراتي لم يعفو رسمها لما نسجتها من جنوب وشمالي Let us halt our camels here, friends, and take a moment to recall the campsite of a loved one and the tents where she dwelled a while. Here at Liwa Tudehanikrat, there's hardly a trace still left for all the weaving back and forth of the south wind and the west. But the poet's evocation of love does not stop at the already customary weeping over ruins. He goes on to describe not one, but three women he loved after his fashion. We only have his side of the story, but his passion was apparently consummated with two of them, were rejected by the third. The coy one was named Fatima. The others are not named. I remember a girl out in the sandy dunes. She pulled away from my embrace and cursed me with words whose sting will never fade. Ah, Fatima, mahlan ba'da hadha tadalluli. Oh, Fatima, go easy with your coquettishness. If you're intent on breaking up, at least do it gently. Give my heart an order. I'm bound to obey since those tears in your eyes are like two arrows shot into the ruins of a slaughtered heart. Fatima's coolness makes him reminisce about a girl who was not so cool. I often think about another girl, well guarded in her tent. She did not pull away, but let me take my pleasure at my leisure. I had to sneak past her relatives who would have loved to boast that they had killed me in the attempt. Just as the Pleiades stood out on the sky like bright jewels embroidered on a black belt, I found her all ready for bed behind a screen, wearing just a nightdress when I came to her. By Allah, you'll never get past them again, said she, but we slipped out together, dragging the hem of a gown to hide our tracks in the sand. We left her tribe's encampment and hid behind a dune. I drew her head down to me, and she bent down, slender waist and supple ankles, slim and fair, not flabby, her breast like a burnished mirror. Then came Islam, and with it the need to write down and preserve the Quran, a script based on that of related Semitic languages was adapted to Arabic. And once the text of the holy book was safely consigned to writing, so were the most famous of the long desert odes, like that of Imrul Qais. They contained themes that were shocking to pious Muslims. But the poetry was so sublime that their authors were forgiven and the verses enshrined in the canon of Arabic poetry. This is a page from an early Quran, which is on view in the museum's new Islamic galleries. This is a slightly later one from North Africa. The golden script is beautiful in itself, but otherwise unadorned. It's still the message that counts. 
In the great urban centers like Basra, Baghdad, and Dam Damascus, and later Cairo, poetry soon became a literate activity. With literacy came changes in love poetry. Umar ibn Abi Rabi'a was from the Prophet's own tribe of Quraysh, born into a wealth wealthy family of Meccan merchants. He was among the first to detach the love poem from the former place as one section of a long ode that also dwelt on camels, war, and traveling. In his urbane hands, it became something we would recognize today, a discreet piece about his real or otherwise passion for a real person, and not without a touch of humor. The rumor says she asked her friends at the bath that day as she stood naked ready for a dip, tell me truly, do you see me as he describes me or does he overdo his praise? But they laughed all at once and told her this, you think every eye sees the one you love is fair. She's a fresh young thing, and when she smiles, teeth white as chamomile, her hailstones you can see, her eyes so black, their whites so white, her neck is soft and supple. She's tender, always cool when outside it's hot, even in midsummer's fiery blaze. But in the winter she's warm, a young man's perfect blanket when icy cold turns round. I'll not forget the first time we spoke together with bitter tears coursing down my cheek. I said, welcome to you, my heart's desire. Now say your name. And she said, I'm Hint. They say she cast a spell on me. And if that's true, how wonderful, how sublime a spell it surely is. But every time I ask her, when's our tryst to be? Hind just laughs and says, day after tomorrow. Bashar ibn Burd lived from about 714 to 783 AD, a life spanning both Umayyad and Abbasid times. He lived through the transition from an Arab Muslim world ruled from Damascus by the descendants of desert Arabs to one ruled from Baghdad by increasingly non-Arab Muslim converts or their sons. Being the son of a Persian freedman, Bashar was doubly representative of the new Abbasid spirit that gradually turned away from the former preoccupation with Arabic tribal issues and the desert. He's chiefly known for his love poems, which are a curious mixture of cliches and colorful detail. In his old age, he got on the wrong side of the wazir of the caliph al-Mahdi, was executed and thrown into the Tigris. Here is one of Bashar's more, more vivid love poems. We love each other, and it's enough for us to sit together and to talk a while, with maybe a little kiss, no harm in that, provided I don't undo my clothes, but when the curtains closed across the door, I might slip my hand to feel inside her dress or leave a little love bite on her arm while my arm bells bears the mark of hers and her anklet bells flash and jingle on her leg and the sound of panting breath grows louder still. The lovely creature's hand drops, droops coyly down and she lets drop a tear and says, stop, oh stop and go away. You're not at all like I had heard. You're a wild one to contend with by the Lord. My nursemaid's out today. I'm left alone with you. There's no one but God to be my guide with you. Dear God, take my side. You see how weak I am from this wanton's roving hand, and he's not even drunk. He's such a strong, rough fellow. He's impossible to stop. He squeezed me so tight, my bangle got all bent. And then he rubs his beard, and black and grisly too, against me, pricking me like needles do. 
You overwhelmed me. Seeing my family were away, they would have been ashamed if they'd been around. I swear by God, you'd not have escaped alive. Now go, you brutal, vicious bully, you. What will my mother say when she sees my bruised lip? What will you do when this story gets around? What, whatever will my nursemaid think of me if only prudent caution had been of use to me today? I knew that you would do just what I feared. So what do you have to say for yourself, you brute? On hearing this, I told her, take it easy, my pet, for I've got vast experience and know what it's about. Just tell them that a bug with claws attacked you, as though some bugs actually have claws. As time went on, Arabic love poetry became more sophisticated, a genre where wit and learning could be flaunted within the framework of poetry ostensibly written to a beloved person. It would eventually dry out, becoming more an exercise in rhetoric than what we would relate to as a love poem. One exception was a warrior poet from Aleppo, Abu Firas al-Hamdani. He was forced to take time out from fighting the Byzantines by a spell in a Byzantine prison, waiting for his ransom to be paid. We wrapped ourselves in garments of the night until the infant head of night began turning white. We slept like twin branches of a sapling teased by the north and south winds of the morning. The way we were would send the envious off in fury and the watcher's eye would turn away from us until the morning's first light appeared like white hairs peeking out beneath dyed white side whiskers. O oh, night, you left us without our scolding you, and you, morning, came most unwelcome. The Arabs invaded Spain in 711 AD, and it took them about a century and a half to complete their conquest and establish an Islamic state with the majority Arabic-speaking Muslim population. The early poems are pale imitations of what was being composed at the brilliant court of Harun al-Rashid and his successors in Baghdad. Then suddenly, as it appears to us, sometime after the year 1000 AD, things changed dramatically, both in the East and the West. In the East, there was the beginning of a catastrophic political and cultural decline, culminating in the fatal Mongol sacking of the capital Baghdad in 1258 AD. In El Andalus, Muslim Spain, there was increased political fragmentation from about 1100 AD. But this was coupled with a cultural flowering, not just in poetry, but in philosophy and the plastic and graphic arts, as well as architecture. As you can see from this Quran page from Muslim Spain, on display in the new Islamic galleries, the script has become much more florid and the margins decorated so that the message has become one with the medium, very different from the austere Kufic script we saw from the East. In Al Andalus, most if not all poetry was composed to be sung, and the two dominant genres were love poetry and odes to the lush nature of their adopted Spanish home. But the two were not mutually exclusive. Nature, love, and art were seen as reverberating, reflecting, and enhancing each other. As in this ivory plaque that belonged to the Caliph El Hakim, which you can see in the new galleries. The atmosphere of Moorish Spain is very much in evidence in the courtyard of Gallery 456, the Patty Cadby Birch Court. This very musical poetry soon came to outshine the poetry from the East, even before the Mongols, and the Andalusis developed new forms of strophic songs 
with internal rhyme. They even experimented with using the spoken language of the common people, a mixture of colloquial Arabic and the Spanish, mostly spoken by Christians and Jews in this most cosmopolitan culture. The intertwining of nature and love is felt in this poem, composed in the early 11th century AD by my favorite of all Arabic poets, Ibn Zaydun. He was in love with a flighty princess, Walada. She returned her passion, his passion for a while, then fell out of love, and even wrote rather obscene verses mocking her former lover. Here is one of his short pieces, a nostalgic memory of the glorious pleasure garden of Cordoba, the Medina de Zahra, where this capital, now in the museum's collections, was found. إني ذكرتك بزهراء مشتاقة والأفق طلق ووجه الأرض قد راك وللنسيم اعتلال في أسائله كأنما رق لي فاعتل إشفاقا والروض عن مائه الفضي مبتسم كما حللت عن اللبات الطواقة How I remembered you in the gardens of Zahra the horizon so clear, the face of the earth seemed to glow. The breeze died down towards evening, as though it pitied me and languished from compassion. While the garden was smiling with its silvery water, as though you had loosened necklaces from above your breast. We amused, amused ourselves with flowers that charmed the eyes. The dew trickled over them until their necks bent down as though their eyes, when they saw my sleepless condition, wept for me, and the glistening tears ran down. Everything stirred up memories in me, making me yearn for you, and passion burst the confines of my breast. Ah, for those days, our bygone days of pleasure, we passed the night like thieves while time slept. And now I give thanks that I, at least, have been faithful to our promise. You found consolation while I remain your true lover. While Lada wrote this short poem about him, one might even wonder who is the better poet. ترقب إذا جن الظلام زيارتي فإني رأيت الليلة أكتم للسر وبي منك ملو كان بالشمس لم تلح وبالبدر لم يطلع وبالنجم لم يسري Wait for me, I'll come to you as soon as darkness falls our secret will be safer in the night, for if the sun saw us together, it would not shine, the moon would fail to rise, and the stars would stick immobile in their tracks. The next poem is a muashaha or strophic ballad by Ibn Baqi. Just as the night came trailing its dusky train, I poured her wine perfumed with fennel and with musk, and clasped her to me as a soldier girds his sword. Her long hair fell on my shoulders like its harness. When at last she fell asleep, leaning against my breast, I gently moved her off me, undid her sweet embrace. I feared my pounding heart would make a restless pillow. This is a poem by Ibn Khafaja, one of the most famous Andalusian love poets. I'm drawn to her in the morning, and then at night a tryst with her distracts me from good works. Her breasts already in waiting, pointed as a lance. My kisses roam her cheeks like wild horses. 
But when I start to harvest the fruit she promised me, she pulls away from my embrace. I call her from up close, though it seems so far away. But then as dawn begins to dissipate the night, she comes to me, more desirable than a hard journey's rest. Long delayed sleep or calm after toil, welcome rain on the parched earth, or even today from so far away, eternal paradise here on earth. Those nights, those nights from when from one cup we trade sw sips of wine, our words like a gentle breeze swaying roses. The cup she handed me seemed scented with musk, and in our sweet to and fro, as I drank from her hand, the wine became pure light, transformed by my love. Until finally her body yielded to the heady wine's work, drowsy she leaned against my arm, and with my kisses I quenched my passion's fire in her cool lips. In my embrace she slipped out of her embroidered robe like a sword from its sheath, and I held her so smooth to the touch, so perfectly formed. My kisses moved from her cheek to her mouth, its liquor more enticing than any rose, as my caresses roiled the whiteness of her alabaster cheeks. The full moon did all but envy me that night. But now we're far apart, and all I can kiss are the hints of myrtle she left behind, alone in the stark and desolate dawn. O oh, night of love, will you ever return? Another Muashaha by the famous blind poet of Tudela. There is a rich internal rhyme after each phrase, which it was beyond me to reproduce in English. Here's the first line in Arabic, and then the translation. Dahikun an juban, safirun an badri, daqa an hu zaman wa hawa hu sabri. Laughing through pearls, gliding like the moon, beyond time's reach, sheltered in my breast. Oh, how I suffer, worn down by woe. She toyed with me, delicious tormentor. I say, how about it? And she says, what if? Like a verdant willow branch, she sways as though the west wind and rain were flirting with her. When such a cup meets such a mouth, how can time stop passion fed by wine? Oh, how could a star with its pearl bright light light up her excuse and my plight? Can't I convince you? Must I despair? I'm wasting away with tears and sighs. I begged her, perhaps, but that perhaps made me sad. Ibn Khuzman is a poet who cultivated a rough persona. He wrote his songs mostly in the colloquial Arabic of his native Cordoba and added words and phrases in the Hispanic dialect of the street to give his already quite spicy verse some spice. Here's a musical recreation of one of his ba ballads. Daba na shaki la lima nujema Man yhabba kwa yamut fik In kutil taad yakun bik La kadr kalbi khalik La midabar dan nujema
Now do I yearn for you, la lema, little star, as one who loves and perishes for you. If I die, it's all because of you. If my heart could forget about you, I wouldn't sit composing this little song. I'm half crazy on the rocks, so sad, so full of woes. See how long the day is, but hardly a morsel of it did I taste. You're the ornament of every party, elegant and well brought up. If God made you a palsied beggar, such alms you'd collect, gemstones by the bushel. Two little breasts like apples, two little cheeks white as flour. Gems are her tiny teeth and her little mouth, sugar itself. If you banned people from holy fasting and said, be heretics one and all, there'd be no one left in the mosque unless he be bound hand and foot. How long will you rebuff me? How long this meanness means to last? Pray God to bundle us up tight, alone in an empty house. There were several outstanding poets who were women, which is not surprising. But the fact that their poems have survived is testimony to their talent, as all the anthologists were men. Many of these poems are surprisingly frank about feminine desire. This one is by Hasmuna bint Ismail. أرى روضة قد حان خطافها وليس يرى جان يمد لها يدا. I can see a garden with a ripe fruit to be picked, but no gardener lays a hand on it. Woe is me, my youth is wasting fast, and I am left alone with nothing but what I cannot name. Finally, there's the enigmatic corpus of poems or songs known as kharjas. These are the refrains of longer poems and are unusual in that they're written in a mixture of colloquial Arabic and the medieval Romance dialect spoken by the common people in Spain, and they speak in women's voices. They're used as the finale to long muashahas, the strophic poems invented in Moorish Spain. You may recognize the first line of the first one, which Andre will read in the original. This is very close to the modern Spanish tanto or tan te amare, I'll love you so much. The second kharja is a wonderful example of cultural mixing in Al Andalus. It closes a long muashaha in Hebrew, and the anonymous Jewish poet chose a popular song that mixed Arabic with one phrase in Spanish, ken putrad levare, who could bear it. Tantamaray, tantamaray, illa kunal sharti, and tajma khil khali ma kurti. I love you, I love you all you want, but only one condition that you swing my anklets right up to my earrings. يا أسمر يا قرة العينين كم بتراد لباري الغيبة حبيبي Oh you with the dusky face Oh light of my eyes Who could bear the separation love of mine Here is one of the poems from the Alhamra by Ibn Zamrak, a favorite of the last Arab rulers of Granada. In his verses, the Andalusian love of nature, of flowers and running water, come together in a rather conventional love song. Remember the image of the eyes as arrows in the very first poem cited, the hanging ode of Imrul Qais a millennium earlier. give my soul as ransom for a fawn-like creature whose eyelashes are arrows to threaten any heart. 
the gazelle, the daisy, and the lance are put to shame whenever she moves or smiles or glances. I marvel to see the night in her hair and the morning in her unveiled face. I marvel at the necklace of tidy pearls between her lips while the necklace of my tears is in disarray. No sooner do I desire to harvest the daisies in her mouth than she unsheathes the swords in those black eyes. I'll never forget the night I spent waiting for that crescent to appear with a heart on tenterhooks, tortured by doubt. At last I gazed at her in a garden like her twin, both as fragrant as paradise. Equal to each other, in every form of beauty there is to be seen or heard or smelt. Arabic culture, and with it Arabic poetry, went into a long decline, only to be resuscitated around the beginning of the 20th century. At first, aspiring poets tinkered with the well-worn cliches of the ancients. Later during the 20th century, they mostly escaped from stale archaism, but many of them fell into imitation of Western poets or were mostly concerned with politics. There are exceptions, however, such as the Lebanese poet who used the pseudonym Adonis or the Syrian poet Nizar Qabani, who died in 1998. I'll end with two of Qabani's shorter poems the first translated by Lina Jayusi and W.S. Merwin, the last one by me. <coughs> the day I met you, I tore up all my maps, all my prophecies. Like an Arab stallion, I smelled the rain of you before it wet me. I heard the pulse of your voice before you spoke. Undid your hair with my hands before you had braided it. Oh, you with the eyes so deep, your love is extreme mystical, sacred, like death, like birth, impossible to repeat. الا یا ایها الساغی ادر کعسا مناول ها که عشق آسان نمود اول ولی افتاد مشکل ها به بوی نافی که آخر سبازان تر بکشاید زتاب جعد مشکینش چه خون افتاد در دل ها حضوری گر همی خواهی مش و غایب از او حافظ متى ما تلقى من تهوى 
ابدأ الدنيا واهملها. O Saki, bring around a cup of wine and let me drink, for love seemed easy at first, but then grew difficult. Flooded with their heart's blood are those who wait for the scent that dawn wind may spill from her dark, musky curls. Hafiz, if you desire her presence, pay attention. When you are with your beloved, abandon the world and let it go. هرگز نمیگرد آن که دلش زنده شد به عشق ثبت است در گریده عالم دوام ما He whose heart has been revived by love will never die In the ledger of the world we are marked eternal taste a drop from her ruby lips and she left. I didn't gaze long enough at her beauty and she left. Perhaps she had tired of my company. She packed her things. I couldn't overtake her and she left. Sharbati az lab la'lash nachishidi mubaraf. Ruye mahpeykar u سیر ندیدیم و برف گویی از صحبت ما نیک به تنگ آمده بود بار بربست و به گردش نرسیدیم برف Her sultry glance rooted us in the alley of devotion In the end you saw how deeply we bought that glance But she left عشق میداد که از کوی ارادت نرویم دیدی آخر که چنان عشق خریبی ما برفت She strolled in the field of grace and beauty but I didn't stroll in her garden of union and she left شد چمان در چمن حسن و لطافت لیکن در گلستان به سالش نچمید ما برفت I wailed and wept all night just like Hafez, for alas, I was too late to say goodbye, and she left. I'm sure Hafez had a shab, now it was Ari Kardim. I'm sure Hafez had a shab, now it was Ari Kardim, that he did not have a shab, now it was Ari Kardim. If I follow her, she stirs up trouble, and if I sit back, she rises up in anger. And if on a road for one moment in my loyalty like dust, I follow her like wind, she flees. And if I seek half a kiss from the jewel box of her mouth, laughter and disdain pours like sugar. The deceit which I see in your eyes muddies many a good name with the dust of the road. The hills and valleys of love's wilderness are the snare of affliction. Who has a lion heart and will not shun affliction? Hafiz, give your head to the threshold of submission. For if you battle with fate, It will strike you back. 
اگر روم ز پیش فتنه ها برانگیزد بر از طلب بنشینم به کینه برخیزد و اگر به ره گذری یک دم از وفاداری چو گرد در پیش افتم چو باد بگریزد و اگر کنم طلب نیم بوسه صد افسوس ز حقه دهنش جون شکر فرو ریزد من آن فریب که در نرگس تو میبینم و ساب روی که با خاک ره برا میزد فراز و شیب بیابان عشق دام بلاست کجاست شیر دلی که از بلا نپرهیزد براستانه تسلیم سر به حافظ که گر ستیزه کنی روزگار بست گفتم غم تو دارد گفتم غم تو دارد گفتم غم از سر گفتم که ما گفتم که بر خیال راه نظر به بندم گفتم که صبر و سود از راه دیگر آگر گفتم که بوی زلفت کم راه عالمم کرد گفتا اگر بدانی هم اوت ره برانگرد گفتم که نوش لعلت ما را به آرزو کنش گفتم تو بندگی کن گفتم تو بندگی کن تو بند هر ورا گفتم دل رحیمت کی قصد صلح دارد گفتم مگوی با کس تا وقت آن برای گفتم زمان اشرت دیدی که چون سر آمد گفتا خموش حافظ این قصه هم بر آید I said I suffer because of you She said your suffering will end I said become my moon She said if it comes to pass I will barricade my, your image from the road of my sight It's a thief and will come a different way. The scent of your hair has led me astray in the world. If you understand, it can also be your guide. Thirst for your ruby lip killed me with hope. Serve it, for it comes to nourish the servants. When does your merciful heart intend a truce? Speak of this to no one until the time comes. I said, did you see how those joyful times ended? She said, be quiet, Hafez. This grief will also end.
Being a lover means your heart must ache. No sickness hurts as much as hearts break. A lover's ailment is totally unique. Love is astrolabe of all we seek. Whether you feel divine or earthly love, ultimately we are destined for above. To capture love, whatever words I say, make me ashamed when love arrives my way. While explanation sometimes makes things clear, true love through silence only one can hear. The pen would smoothly write the things it knew, but when it came to love, it split in two. A donkey stuck in mud is logic fate. A donkey stuck in mud is logic's fate. Love's nature only love can demonstrate. Sunshine reveals its nature in each ray. So if it's proof you want, just look this way. Asheri, Asheri, پیداست از زاری دل نیست بیماری چو بیماری دل علت عاشق جو علتها جداست عشق استرلاب اسرار خداست عاشقی گرزین سر و گرزان سر است آقبت ما را بدان شهر رهبر است هرچه گویم عشق را شرح و بیان چون به عشق آیم خجل باشم از آن گرچه تفسیر زبان روشنگر است لیک عشق بی زبان روشنتر است چون قلم اندر نوشتن می شتافت چون به عشق آمد قلم بر خود شکافت ای عقل در شرحش چو خرد در گل بخوفت عقل در شرحش چو خرد در گل بخوفت شرح عشق و عاشقی هم عشق گفت آفتاب آمد دلیل آفتاب گر دلیلت باید از وی رو متاب تا از تو جدا شده است آغوش مرا از گریه کسی ندیده خاموش مرا در جان و دل و دیده فراموش نی از بحر خدا مکن فراموش مرا Since you have left my side no one has seen my eyes dry my soul, my heart, my eyes will not forgive you forget you for the love of God do not forsake you گر من میرم مرا بیارید شما مرده به نگار من سپارید شما گر بوسه دهد بر لب پوسیده من گر زنده شدم عجب مدارید شما If I die bring me forth and trust my body to my beloved When my beloved gives a kiss to my old rotten lips If I revive do not be dumbfounded آنی که فلک با تو در آید به ترب گر آدم ای شیفت گردد چه عجب تا جان بودم بندگیت خواهم کرد خواهی به طلب مرا خواهی مطلب You are the one who makes the cosmos dance No wonder if humans become enamored of you Whether you want me or not Until I have life I will be your slave. آن کس که بر روی خوب او رشک پریست آمد سهری و بر دل من نگریست 
او گریه و من گریه که تا آمد صبح او گریه و من گریه که تا آمد صبح پرسید که از این هر دو عجب عاشق کیست The one whose beauty is the envy of fairies came to me at dawn and looked into my heart He cried and I cried until the morning came Wondering, he asked, which one of these two is the lover? Oh, what a delight sitting in the garden, you and I, two bodies, two faces, one soul you and I the flowers come to life with colors and birds begin their songs at the moment we enter the garden you and I ecstatic you and I become one free from you and I free from baffling suspicions and exhilarated you and I Sugar dribbles from the beaks of heaven's parrots when we laugh like that, you and I. In one form we are in this earth of dust and in the other, eternal in paradise, that land of sugar, you and I. اونو کندم که نشینیم در ایوان من و تو به دو نقش و به دو صورت به یک جان من و تو رنگ باغ و دم مرغان بدهد آب حیات آن زمانی که در آییم به بستان من و تو من و تو بی من و تو جمع شویم از سر زوغ خوش و فارق ز خرافات پریشان من و تو توتیان فلکی جمله شکرخار شوند در مقامی که بخندیم به دانسان من و تو به یکی نقش بر این خاک و بر آن نقش دگر در بهشت ابدی و شکرستان من و تو چهره زرد مرا بین و مرا هیچ مگو درد بی حد بنگر بهر خدا هیچ مگو دی خیال تو بی آمد به در خانه دل در بزد گفت بیا در بگشا هیچ مگو دست خود را بگزیدم که فقان از غم تو گفت من آن تو هم دست مخوا هیچ مگو گفتم این جان مرا گرد جهان چند کشی گفت هر جا که کشم زود بیا هیچ مگو گفتم ار هیچ نگویم تو روا میداری آتشی گردی و گویی که درا هیچ مگو همچون گل خنده زد و گفت درا تا بینی همه آتش سمن و برگ و گیا هیچ مگو همه آبتش گل گویا شد و با ما می گفت جز لطف و کرم دلبر ما هیچ مگو Look at my shallow face and say nothing Look at this infinite pain and for God's sake say nothing Yesterday your image appeared in my heart He knocked at the door and said open up and say nothing I bit my hand and said Are you here to give me more grief? You said, don't bite your hand. I'm yours, but say nothing. I said, how long will you drag my soul around the universe? You said, wherever I drag you, come quickly, but say nothing. If I say nothing, are you satisfied the moment you become fire? Tell me to jump in and say nothing. 
you smiled like a rose and said, jump in and see for yourself. The fire is jasmine, green leaves and roses, but say nothing. The fire turned into speaking roses who told me, speak only of our beloved's love and kindness. Say nothing else. اگر تو فارغی از حال دوستان یارا فراغت از تو باید سر نمی شود ما را تو را در آین دیدن جمال تنعت خیش بیان کند که چه بود از ناشکی بارا که اگر زهر باشد از دستت چنان به زوق و ارادت خورم که حلوا را نگفتم ات که به یغما رود دل از سدی نگفتم ات که به یغما رود دل از سدی چو دل به عشق دهی دل بران یغما را If you are not concerned about friends O oh beloved not one moment passes by that I don't think about you. If you look in the mirror and see the beauty of your own face, the mirror will tell you what your restless lover feels. I swear to love that if you offer me poison, I will drink it as joyfully as I drink the sweetest drink. I told you, Sadie, that your heart will be plundered if you give your heart to the heart stealers of Turkestan. در آن نفس که بمیرم در آرزوی تو باشم بدان امید دهم جان که خاک کوی تو باشم به وقت صبح قیامت چو سرز خاک برارم به گفتگوی تو خیزم به جستجوی تو باشم می بهش ننوشم ز دست ساقی رزوان مرا به باده چه حاجت مرا به باده چه حاجت که مست روی تو باشم In the moment of dying my soul desire is your presence I will give up my soul in the hope of being the dust of your alleyway. On the day of resurrection, when I rise from my grave, your name only will be on my lips, and I will search only your face. I will not drink the wine from the hand of the cupbearer of paradise. I have no need for wine. I'll be drunk with your face. گری گفتش که ای مرغ بلند عشق دلبندی مرا کرده است بند عشق او آمد مرا در پیش کرد 
عقل من بر بود و کار خیش کرد شد خیال روی او رهزن مرا و آتشی زد در همه خرمن مرا یک نفس بی او نمیابم قرار کفر باید سب کردن زان نگار من زمانی بیرخ آن ماه روی چون توانم بود هرگز راه جوی دردم از دارو و درمان در گذشت کار من از کفر از کار من از کفر و ایمان در گذشت کفر من ایمان من از عشق اوست آتشی در جان من از عشق اوست من چو بی من چو بی طاقت شدم در کار او یک نفس نشکیبم از دیدار او Great Hoopo said another bird My love has loaded me with chains I cannot move This bandit love confronted me and stole my intellect my heart my innermost soul The image of her face is like a thief who fires the harvest and leaves only grief Without her I endure the pangs of hell raving and cursing like an infidel One moment absent from her lovely face how could I seek the way and leave this place my pain exceeds all cure and remedy i've passed beyond both faith and blasphemy my blasphemy and faith are love for her my soul is her abject idolater without her face blood chokes me i am drowned i am dust blown aimlessly across the ground I haven't seen your beautiful face It's been a few days Come, my eyes are longing To look at you Just one glance at your face Will make my eyes happy Just one elegant move of your body Fills my heart with joy Nadideam rukh khub et ruzaki chand ast Biyav ke دیده به دیدارت آرزومند است به یک نظاره به روی تو دیده خوشنود است به یک کرشم دل از غمزه تو خورسند است مجنون چو حدیث عشق بشنید اول بگریست پس بخندید میگفت گرفته حلقه دربر که امروز منم چو حلقه بردر در حلقه عشق جان فروشم بی حلقه او مباد گوشم گویند عشق کن جدایی کین از طریق آشنایی من قوت ز عشق میپذیرم گر میرد عشق من بمیرم پرورده عشق شد سرشتم جز عشق مبا سر نوشتم آن دل که بود ز عشق خالی سیلاب قمش برا حالی گویم که خوز عشق وا کن لیلی طلبی ز دل رها کن یا رب تو مرا به روی لیلی هر لحظه بده زیاد میلی از عمر من اون چه هست بر جای بستان و به عمر لیلی افزای از عشق به قایتی رسانم کو ماند اگر چه من نمانم از چشمه عشق ده مرا دور از چشمه عشق ده مرا نور بین سرمه مکن ز چشم من دور گرچه ز شراب عشق مستم عاشق تر از این کنم که هستم When Majnun heard the word love first he wept then he laughed Holding on to the door ring of Kaaba he said Today I hang on the door like a ring 
in the circle of love i give up my life may i always be like a ring on your ear they tell me live love they tell me leave love this is the way to god but i am fed by love if love dies i die my nature is nourished by love may there be no fate for me but love the heart which is empty of love the flood of sorrow will uproot it they say free your soul from love send away your love of lady from your heart oh god i beg you to increase every moment more and more my love for the face of lady whatever remains of my life take it and add to lady's life drown me so in love that love remains even if i die give me light from the spring of light do not take this collyrium from my eye although i am already drunk with wine of love make me fall even deeper in love خواستم از لعل او دو بوسه و گفتم تربیتی کن به آب لطف خسیرا گفت یکی بس بود و گر دو ستانی فتنه شود آزموده این بسیرا عمر دوباره است بوسه من و هرگز عمر دوباره نداده اند کسی را I asked for two kisses from her ruby lips and said nourish this bramble with the water of life she said one is enough if you get two then there will be trouble i have tasted many times my kiss is the giver of a second life and no one has ever been given a second life goftam rokh to bahar khandan man ast گفتان تو نیز باغ و بستان من است گفتم لب شکرین تو آن من است گفت از تو دریغ نیست گر جان من است I said your face is my smiling spring She said yours is my garden and orchard I said your sweet lips are mine She said I wouldn't deny you even my own life گفتم که بیا وعده دوشینه بیار ورنه بخروشم از تو اکنون چه هزار گفتا دهم گفتا دهم ای همه جفا نک زنهار آواز مده که گوش دارد دیوار I said come fulfill your last night's promise otherwise I will cry out like a nightingale she said hush I'll do what you want, but be careful. Don't holler, wolves have ears. Thank you.